Welcome to the first tutorial of Guitar Scientist, the free online fretboard diagrams generator that allows you to create, download, store, and share guitar diagrams online. This tool is designed for maximum flexibility to create any fingering diagram of scales, chords, arpeggios, and so on to help you in your guitar practice, learning, or teaching. I realized that I packed what was once a little tool with so many functions that now it is a quite complex piece of software. So in this video, I will give you a quick overview of all the functions of this editor. This is what you see when you visit the generator on GuitarScientist.com. You have a default diagram with 6 strings and 12 frets, and if you click on the single frets, you can place marker dots. Here I'm writing a G major arpeggio. Then I click on the title to edit it and insert a more relevant one. I can also insert a subtitle or a description if I need to. Then by clicking on the download icon, I can download my diagram as a PNG image on my computer. I can print it and send it to a friend or a student, but let's say that I will need to edit this diagram in the future. I can click on the save button, save fretboard, and my diagram will be stored online. I can follow this link to reload my diagram, or I can share it on a social network, or in the Guitar Scientist community to let other people see it. If they make changes to my diagram and save them, a new link will be generated for them, so there's no risk I can lose my work. My link will always lead to this version. I can copy the link to the clipboard to paste it somewhere or send it as a message to a friend, but if I forget it, I can just click on the load icon where I will find a list of all the previous diagrams I created. By now you are maybe wondering, what do all those other buttons do? Okay, let's click them one by one. Fretboards. The first icon opens the fretboards panel from where you can set the numbers of fretboards that will be displayed in the document along with their size, style, and how many frets they will have. The first slider sets the number of frets. You can edit this parameter even after editing your guitar diagrams. No markers will be deleted. These other two sliders resize the frets. You can adjust them to your taste. You may want bigger frets for diagrams with just a few ones, or smaller frets in the opposite scenario. Also, you can set this to a big value if you want a bigger generated image to download. To add or remove fretboards to the document, just click on these two buttons. Below you have five different squares with color schemes you can apply to your fretboard diagrams. Last you have two toggle switches. The first one toggles the fret markers. Useful for instance when you are writing something that you don't want to visualize on a specific fret. The second switch adds an extra caption box under each fretboard. When you add more than one fretboard to your document, you will see four small icons in the top right corner of each one. Those small icons. The first one, shaped like a pencil, indicates the fretboard you are working on. Automatic actions like generating scales or transpositions will have effect on this fretboard. You can select the current fretboard by clicking on this pencil or by manually placing marker dots on it. The second small icon lets you duplicate the content of a fretboard onto another one. Click on the copy icon, then click on another fretboard, and the content of the first one will be copied on the destination fretboard. The third icon lets you drag and rearrange your fretboards, and the last one deletes all the content of the individual fretboard. Tuning. Moving on, the second icon in the dock opens the tuning panel, from where you can set the number of strings and the tuning of your strings. The default is a six-string guitar with standard tuning. If you play a standard tuning 7, 8, or 9 string guitar, you just have to change the string number. If you play bass or other stringed instruments, you can set the number of strings up to 12 and work on the sliders to match your tuning. You will see as many sliders as the number of strings you set. All the necks displayed will have the same tuning you selected in this panel. Colors. The third icon opens the color panel. From this panel, you can choose the color of the markers you place and highlight areas on the diagrams. Select a color, then click on a fret. The marker dots will have the color you just selected. If you don't like the standard palette, you can choose any color by clicking on the last square. To change the color of an existing marker, 
Select another color and click on it again. You can also split colors. To do so, just click on two different colors and then on a split color square to select it. Then click on a fret to place split colored markers. The section below contains the square drawing function. Activate squares mode, then click on an add square button to add a colored semi-transparent square to the bottom of the document. You can then drag and resize the squares to highlight some areas of the fretboard. To remove a square, just hover over it and click on Remove. Remember to switch squares mode off to edit the fingerings again. Layers. Let's keep the pace here. The fourth icon opens the Layers panel. With Guitar Scientist, you can edit two layers on every fretboard. The second layer uses square markers so that you can see them behind the first layer marker dots. For instance, you can use this function to write or generate a scale with blue square markers on layer 2 and an arpeggio with yellow markers on layer 1. Then you can switch layers on and off to visualize your shapes together and separately. These erase buttons allow you to wipe the content of individual layers. Notation. The next icon opens the notation panel. From here, you can automatically insert note names or intervals into the markers. Just activate the switch and Guitar Scientist will do the rest. Anyway, depending on your key, you may need, for instance, to use A sharp instead of B flat. To do so, just click on these squares to toggle between the enharmonically equivalent note names or interval names. If you need something less common, like sharp third or B double flat or the like, you can use the custom text. This little field allows you to write anything into the marker dots. The text contained here will appear into the markers and will overwrite the automatic notation. Delete the text in the field to place normal markers again. Scales. The next icon is the Scales icon. This function allows for automatic generation of scales and arpeggios. Just enter a structure using the drop-down menu or select your own interval structure by clicking on these squares then click on Generate Scale. The function will generate the scale on the selected layer of the selected neck, starting from its current root, so make sure you're all set before clicking on Generate Scale. If you don't want a fretboard-wide diagram, the sliders below allow you to select a smaller area where the scale will be generated. For instance, you can use this function to quickly generate a blue scale on layer 2 and then a yellow quadriad on layer 1 to visualize them together and separately. Octaver. Moving on, the Octaver icon activates an alternative way to write neck-wide arpeggios, scales, or other shapes in a breeze. When the Octaver is on, you just click on a note and all occurrences on all octaves will be selected. For example, you can map all the A major triad positions on the entire fretboard with just three clicks on A, C sharp, and E. Also, you can use it to quickly change the color of all the root notes or of any other degree. Root Selector. Next, you have the Root Selector icon. You need to select the root in order to display the right intervals and generate scales in the right key. Just activate this function, then click on the fret corresponding to the root. The different necks in your document can have different root notes. Transposer! The next icon opens the transposing panel. This function allows you to shift your marker dots. Click on transpose up or down to transpose all the markers on the current layer, or click on select dots to transpose only some selected markers. Remember to deactivate the dot selector to edit the fretboard again. Undo! Next, we have the undo button. There isn't much to say here. You can undo up to three actions. This little number indicates how many undos you have left. Reset document! The next icon is the reset button. This button wipes out everything you've written, but it keeps your tuning, number of strings and frets, and your root notes. So if you saved a document with a particular setup and you want to use it as a template for a new one, you can reset it and start editing from there. Download! Close to the reset button, there is the download icon. It generates a PNG image of your document. You can easily download it this way. No registration is needed. The images are free for you to use for every purpose. 
save and or share. The next button is the save button. To edit your diagrams in the future, you need to save an editable version of your document online. You will get a unique link, which you can keep for yourself or share wherever you like to show your document to other people. If you or anybody else makes changes to your work and saves again, he will get a new link. So once you save, no overriding or vandalizing of your work is possible under any circumstances. Share without worries. Load icon. Obviously, you don't have to remember your links. To reopen your documents, you just need to click on the load icon. Your saved links will be shown in this panel. Instructions. The last icon opens an instruction panel. If you don't remember how something works, you just have to point your mouse over the buttons and a brief recap of how things work will be displayed in this panel. Okay, this was a comprehensive overview of every function. Now you are all set to create your diagrams. Feel free to explore and experiment on GuitarScientist.com. And don't forget to share Guitar Scientist with your friends. It's totally free, but it took me ages to program it. So good karma is always appreciated. Rock on! GuitarScientist.com